So, a lot of you guys really liked that video on how to actually not starve to death as a game developer. And on Discord, one of you who is on your way to trying to make a living online with your artistic skills was asking about a sketchy looking email you got about somebody asking to buy your art. And as soon as they described the email, I immediately recognized it because it's a very common scam that I probably get about two or three times a week, and luckily we were able to nip that potential catastrophe early, but today I decided it'd be really good to take a minute and talk about some of the scams that I have encountered as a starving artist online, and what you can do to avoid them, or better yet, spread awareness to help other people avoid them. The first thing you need to understand is there is an entire business model of scam companies designed specifically to target you. And when I say you, I mean generally new young artists looking for honest work who probably have no real experience yet finding or selling their services and are probably poor and struggling to pay rent yourselves, which means you're probably desperate. You're just trying to find an honest way to make a living and want to meet people who might need your skills. And this is exactly why you are the perfect target. The most important thing that I've learned while trying to find work online is that nobody needs a reason to screw you over. And when you are at your lowest, most desperate point in your life, just looking for a way to make a little extra honest change with your skills, that is exactly the point where these pieces of shit will come out and target you. And you have to understand, these people are psychopaths. I would say they're not really human. They prey on the weak, and they give zero shits about the terrible situation you're going to be in when you have zero dollars in your bank account. If you doubt anything that I said, just go watch some of the videos of ethical hackers fighting scammers like Kid Boga or Scammer Payback. Watch them interact with these people who are preying on you, because they literally say, and I quote, If you are dumb enough to fall for the scam, you deserve to have your money stolen. Just because you are minding your own business doesn't mean people don't have any reason to fuck with you. And unfortunately, it's because you are a nice person looking for work that people will try to fuck with you. So here are the most common ways that I've seen them fuck with people. The first and most common recent one that I've seen these days is you'll get an email and it'll say something like, Hey, I like your work. I'd like to buy your art. Now, the first time I saw this, I didn't think too much of it. But where it started to get weird was literally right after I sent a response email asking, Thank you for your interest. Which pieces are you interested in buying? And when I asked this question, they couldn't list the name of a single specific piece they were interested in. And when I asked them to clarify, they just said, oh, well, I like your artwork in general, any piece you are willing to sell. Now, at this point, I was pretty sure this was bullshit, but I entertained them anyway and said, sure, you can send the money to the following PayPal ID. Once I have confirmed the payment, I will send you the commercial license for the piece you want. And here they said, oh, well, I can actually only pay you in cryptocurrency. After that, I told them, sorry, I don't really accept or work with crypto. And then they said, oh, that's all right. You can just sign up to create an account at this website and it's really cheap and really easy. And immediately after that, I told them, listen, I only deal with PayPal and I only deal after I have confirmed the payment has been sent. Then they got mad and tried to convince me that I was making a mistake and missing out on a lot of potential opportunity and I just blocked them from there. Now there's an alternate variant of this scam where instead of offering to pay in crypto, they offer to pay you the sales made from NFTs. But just like every other scam, you have to sign up and create an account, but you need to pay for the creation of the NFT in the first place. It's a load of BS. And for the record, I just want to say that you will never, ever, 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 ever in the history of this channel see me recommend or advertise crypto or nft content on my platform i don't believe in it i don't believe the people who use it and if you ever find me promoting that shit, you should assume the channel has been hacked and seriously start asking youtube to check the ip addresses of my latest videos now the next scam that you need to look out for is the birthday card or wedding card scam this is usually targeted towards 2d artists but basically someone will reach out to you and tell you that they will pay you x amount of money to design a wedding card and if you create the card and ask them to pay they will tell you that they can only pay by mailing you a check due to their country's laws or something and when you get that check and you deposit it into the bank it will appear normal you will see new money in your bank account but after a few days the check will bounce the bank will retract it and subtract the amount it added leaving you with the amount that you started in the beginning and those last three scams are exactly why when anyone contacts me about hiring or buying any of my services i do not accept any arbitrary forms of payment like crypto 
NFTs, sales percentages, revenue splits, favors, trades, checks, or other random forms of transaction. When I deal with a potential client now, I only start working on a project unless half of the total is made in an initial down payment. And anyone unwilling or unable to comply with that is simply welcome to take their business elsewhere. Obviously, you are free to find out your own system that works for you, but that's what works for me. Now, the next scam is a bit newer and more devious, but it's becoming more and more popular recently, which is the art asset scam. Some scammers are not after your money. They are after your work. Similar to the wedding card scam, they'll ask you to create something and then when you send it to them, to no one's surprise, they don't pay you. And instead they just take your asset, upload it to a website somewhere and then try to sell it as their own. And it sucks because most of these people operate in countries where our laws cannot touch them. So even if you do somehow manage to take it down or file a report, it's gonna pop up somewhere else again and you'll be stuck in a wild goose chase. So remember, sometimes they're not after your bank, they are also after your work itself. Now the next scam you have to watch out for, which in my opinion is the most dangerous, is the remote job scam. Now I went through a phase where I probably sent out about 500 resumes and applications to try and find some remote work that I could do in order to pay off some of my student loans. And for months and months and months, I was desperately looking for a job. It didn't really matter if it was local or remote, I just needed something. And this is where I encountered the job scam. Now these are fake jobs and they are very intricately made to appear real. They create job applications on real sites like ZipRecruiter and they often look and sound like legitimate companies. Some of them even pretend to be famous companies. And when you apply to them, they have you go through a big fake interview process where of course, at the end of it, once they have determined that you are dumb enough to fall for their tricks, they tell you that you are the perfect candidate for the job. And if you're like me, when you hear that, you start to become a little suspicious because you are painfully aware just how average you are and there's no fucking way that you're the perfect applicant for any position. But if you go along with the process and see where it goes, what's gonna happen is they will move you through a fake onboarding process. And at the end of it, they'll get you your schedule and your first assignment. And all you need to do now is set up your bank account so that they can direct deposit each month. Now I think you see where this is going. Please don't ever, ever give your bank account number to anyone online no matter how legit you think they are. Like yeah, some companies do actually use direct deposit, but if you are constantly looking for remote work, please, for the love of God, go get a second bank account that is basically just a dummy account with nothing in it. And this account only exists to take direct deposits from your job. Never store money in it, and when money gets into it, you withdraw it immediately. And you be sure to tell the bank that you create this dummy account with that you work remote, and this account will never have money withdrawn from it unless you are there in person. And if money is ever withdrawn from it, and you are not physically in the building, then the account should be presumed compromised and should be reset with new information and new passwords. Now, the last scam that you need to know about is the anti-scam scam. scam. And this one, I actually fell for, so this one's real. This was many years ago when I was starting out. I didn't know what I was doing. But long story short, someone pretending to be a client was going to send me payment for some work that I did. They said, I'll pay you with Zelle. Can you send me like $5? Then once I've confirmed your Zelle, I will send you the payment with your $5 refund. Now I was young and dumb, so I was like, sure, yeah, that sounds fine. I sent five bucks, and then when I asked for payment back, they disappeared. Now, of course, I was pissed, and when I realized I just got scammed, I I went to the bank and said, hey, is there any way you can reverse the Zelle? And they said, unfortunately, there really isn't anything they can do because Zelle is a separate thing from the bank, and then I would have to call Zelle myself to see if they could look into it. So then I went and found the Zelle customer service number at the top of a Google search, called them, told them my situation. They had me describe the case, describe exactly which bank account was affected and what day that transaction happened. And it turns out that the customer service number for Zelle that I found at the top of a Google search was actually not Zelle at all. It was actually a scam company pretending to be Zelle that for some reason appears as the top search when you Google it. Everything was fake. Even though the website looked real, the logos looked real, they had someone with an American accent pretending to be the customer service representative. So when you called that number, you had no idea that you were actually in a scam site. But in reality, they are just collecting your bank information so that they could take money out of it later. Now, I figured this was a scam when they started asking me to send more money out of my account to quote unquote, see 
where that money went and follow it. And after that, I felt uncomfortable. I went to my bank in person and described what was going on. And then they said, yeah, don't ever do that. And luckily I was basically completely broke anyway, so there was no money to steal. But just in case, we had my old account scrapped and created a brand new one since obviously the people who were posing as Zell had literally all of my bank information. So never assume that anything that pops up at the top of a Google search is legitimate. Fake scam companies can easily pretend to be the top search results and look legitimate. And the only people that you should ever call regarding money is the number directly on the back of your physical credit card. That is the only number you should ever call if you're gonna call about money. Because if you call a number you find online, you are rolling the dice. These traps are everywhere. And if you're a starving artist who's really desperate, you really, really have to keep your eyes open for this. Now, I know after hearing this, you might feel really demoralized because this shit's kind of scary. And that's not the lesson that I want you to take from this video. I'm generally a very optimistic, positive person. And just because I've been fucked over a few times doesn't mean that I want to start to see the world as a terrible place because it's really not. The key takeaway from all this is just to truly understand that just because you're minding your own business doesn't mean you're not a target. Just because you're a nice person who's looking for honest work doesn't mean people are not going to try and destroy your life. And that's why it's really important for you to surround yourself with people who do care about you. And if you're unsure about something, you should talk to those people, get their opinion on it. But the point is, you're not alone. And that's why it's really important for us to share our experience because we could potentially save each other a lot of wasted time, a lot of wasted money, and just make the world a better place. So don't lose hope. You're gonna be fine. Just be careful. And again, if you're unsure, feel free to drop by the Discord. We'd be happy to see what you're up to and help you out if we can. And as always, I hope you have a fantastic day, and I'll see you around.